Maybe we can get you to introduce yourself and uh, tell us the name of your organization as I'm well. I'm Venkat Reddy from MB Foundation. I have two, three questions. One for CEI uh, group. How do we reach uh, the groups which are not access to websites and uh, also English-speaking NGOs? Uh, so that is... Uh, I have three more questions and... Uh, then for uh, Mr. Kamat, uh, the reports you gave to MLAs, what is the strategy used, the tone and tenor of the report? Generally, MLAs and MPs won't like to hear the negatives, but still you have to tell them this is what, it's not happening, but we would be uh, very happy to hear and also to replicate in our Andhra if that is, you know, uh, if you share with us. Uh, Third thing is is the general to all NGOs and others and data. There's a big data war is going on. NGOs, non-state actors versus state actors. Whatever they are saying is completely fudged, especially on education numbers, enrollment and retention. Everything is completely fudged. I can watch you, these are, they are fudged numbers. Do we go with that numbers? How do we contest those numbers or through this hub at least, you know, through this CI, you know. For example, in Andhra Pradesh, the government of Andhra Pradesh claims 1,60,000 children only out of school, out of 1 crore 40 lakhs children. This is including, now the definition is including child, <coughs> including dropout and never enrolled. Now they have changed. So whatever we are saying, they are changing the definitions. <laughs> But this is a, but second thing is there is a data which is uh, put on website by the government of Andhra Pradesh in another websites and another websites. Uh, somebody can help in this to analyze those data and giving them, you know, if quickly if I did one uh, data analysis, there are 16 lakh children against one lakh with their own data, you know. But into getting into deep and deeper, that is a, again a big challenge, especially working. Thank you. Very, large, I mean, the most people actually cannot get into internet or English language. Uh, but what I feel is uh, this internet and this English language is for you, for all of us here. And then we reach all of you reach people there. So how to bring their voices into this website is a challenge for us. So we all work together uh, for that. As Ashok was saying, maybe. A voice, voice based uh, messaging, uh, all these things are possibilities. So, I uh, want to share something. On Especially innovations of those groups. That yeah, I, no, no, but uh, we welcome actually uh, for innovations, we have not put any any you know, limit or anything. Even if it's a very small innovation, please bring it to us. Uh, please bring it to us, we will we'll go and profile it. We are not saying very really large. It can be in any language, but we it can be in any language. English and upload, so that's not a, a limitation. But many of you, if you have regional language websites, we can put them up there also. But uh, please bring us even very small innovations. Because in fact, they may give us more insights than the big innovations. So that's why I reach out to as many people as possible, so that you know, even not a small small innovation is missed out. I just add that on, on the profiles, if you look at them, you, you'll see there, of course, they're in English. But there's a place where you can attach other materials. And there would be no reason if you have materials in a, a different language not, not to attach it. That still doesn't deal with your web access problem, but at least it makes stuff a bit more available. Second question. Second question. Elected representatives. Okay, the, uh, the way we designed uh, the reports uh, was that we wouldn't overload anyone at one shot. So we, would, we actually have a series of reports. The first one in the beginning of the academic year would be uh, one on demographics. So essentially it tells uh, the elected rep in his constituency how many Anganwadis, how many primary schools, what's the gender mix, what's the mother tongue mix, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, the second one uh, that we did was on uh, finances that were released under the PAISA initiative uh, to the schools. So, of course, when we sent that the first time around, it got everybody interested, right? So, uh, the third one was on infrastructure. 
So uh, we took the data from both DICE and citizen generated, like from KLP, and put that together. Uh, the fourth one we did was on libraries, and uh, I think there's one on learning outcomes at the end of the year, which is still uh, in, in preparation right now for last year. All of these reports are either one side of a page or two sides of a page. All of the reports are icon-based, so it's easier to comprehend. Uh, we don't uh, we don't say somebody is doing right or wrong. We say your constituency, the average for drinking water is 15 percent. I'm just giving a number, 15 percent, as opposed to the Bangalore average of 25. That's all we will say. It's up to you as the elected rep to figure out what you want to do with it. And in all of these reports, we actually compare your constituency with the neighboring three or four constituencies. Uh, there was, I had a slightly more audacious is to also give it to the guy who lost in the last election, but I was shot down by my team. So <laughs> uh, that would have been a little cheeky to do. Uh, so that's, that's exactly how we do it. And uh, nobody has, like I said, uh, when I spoke, uh, we were not expecting anything, but the response has been good. And uh, as long as you keep it simple, I think it works. Your second question about, uh, and I think if I may, I'll answer that as well, about the issue of what you call fudge data. You know, it doesn't matter whether the data is fudged. Government data should be out. They, they publish it on their website, so it should be, and it's in public domain. If you can have a matching data set generated by citizens, let some academic in the Center for Public Policy or Isaac or NIAS or somewhere else figure this out and do their research and publish things. We don't have to get into uh, quarreling about numbers. Let the numbers speak for themselves. Let both the data sets be available. Let people do the analysis. Very soon, these things will, you know, con the numbers are going to converge. It's not a one-year process. It's probably a 10-year process, but the numbers will eventually converge. You're not here to go and beat somebody up. You're here to try and improve education for our children, which means you have to work hand in hand with government. Just fighting with them is not going to generate anything for you. So let's not worry about fudged or non-fudged. Let's have, you know, comparable data sets available and let numbers speak for themselves. That's our take on this whole thing. This question is to ILFS, ma'am. Um, so the question is, um, you have a lot of methods to teach, to learn. Uh, so you use KN as some technology, and you have some few kits for math, English as well. But how do you evaluate students? What is happening in the classroom? Uh, for several of our programs, uh, we uh, do a baseline study. So what we do is we look at what is the teaching learning tool that we're going to use, what is the impact that it should create, and based on that, create a baseline and an end line. So if you heard CEI also said we do some impact uh, assessments and studies. A lot of it is uh, actually done by our own team internally. A third party, a government may want to do it or whatever. But we do it for ourselves and track children. Like currently in Bihar, we're doing a spoken English and life skills program for about 36,000 students. So we do a random sampling, do a baseline, see where children are, look at our material, see what needs to be done because there are some local uh, localization that needs to be done. Based on that, we define the outcomes. So what do we hope to achieve at the end of, let's say, 120 hours of intervention? Yeah? Uh, we may be right or wrong. We might, you know, achieve it faster in some places and slower in some. So we kind of course correct, if I may say, as we go along. But because the team comprises of teachers and people who've been practicing in the education space for very long, it's possible to do. There's a lot of gut that you work on also, along with the definitions that you do. So baseline, end line, and then actual honest feedback saying why things worked and why things did not work. So that in the next level of scale up, it becomes very simple. Yeah, and what works, you know, one way in one state may work differently in another. So another way a lot of governments actually tell us to do is take one of my worst states and take the best one and district, sorry, or block and, uh, you know, do it there. And then you'll see the range. 
yeah but uh, i wish we had some mechanism where i could impact every child individual level but when you have to talk about scale then you have to kind of play that average card yeah hope that answers this is a question of since is the first time it's starting i wanted to know because uh, while starting our ngo uh, it we made a lot of mistakes which we then had to you know go through so when i look at these uh, when i listen to people i hear the inspiration stories and it makes me feel you know very excited that these things work but what i would really like on the website also what what were the pitfalls you faced where did you stumble and why i'm saying this is um, we work in sexuality education and about 5 years ago we wanted to start a peer education program in colleges and i was trying to find some sort of um, um similar work done and i got one in kenya and they had written down some of the things the face the problems they faced and i avoided those problems because i already read about them and it was some i would have stumbled in so since you are putting up for the first time i would request you to ask i mean i want to know well whether it works to have it up to say what were the things you couldn't do or what are the factors which you know blocked your work so that other people don't make that mistake not much to say except for that's a really fantastic idea and actually something that I've come across a few times um in talking to programs such as yourselves who are really looking to find those lessons learned so that they can help avoid those pitfalls as they move forward developing their own programs so I think that's a really great idea to include on the profiles and I think that's exactly the type of feedback that we'd love to hear from you you know what would be most useful to, to for you to see on these profiles so hopefully soon we'll we'll be able to integrate some of that suggestion in, into the site so while uh, i think uh, ci profiles so in the current data we can put uh, something like successful failures so which can bring uh, so, so it can save somebody's time when they replicate or innovate it is a good idea uh, earlier we had uh, one workshop you know many of you some of you had come for that workshop and in fact one of the suggestions was you know we all succeed in pilot we all succeed in small little work but when you want to really scale up the challenges are completely different so what is that link between a scale up and a successful story you know somebody has to work on that that this can be scaled up only under these situations or you have to modify it like that or you have to you know do it in something different way so there are challenges in scaling up the scaling up is not just that there is one successful and just do it in 100 schools is not possible so that link has to be developed so we have to understand that link and develop it so that is also one of the challenges most of the profiles are going to be non state players or within the state player also the profiles are going to be because in each uh, education sector also department also create there is a earmark to innovation fund for the develop the things and all and maybe within the department also a lot of like a diet regional institutes maybe doing a lot of innovations are you going to capture under your thing and also put in the website uh i i think the 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 answer to that is maybe but not not today um be, why because i mean it's already a huge thing to take on the non state you know documenting the non state sector and um it's important i think that we get this right and so that is a question that's not the, by no means the first time that sort of question has come up um but i i guess our preliminary thinking is that we that would be a good thing to do but maybe it's not the first thing to do but there's one important um perhaps exception to that and various people in different ways refer to it and some of your programs actually are examples of that and that is really these ppps these or, or using the term extremely broadly but i mean partnerships between the state sector and between the government sector and the um non state sector so i think it, that's a sort of that's a kind of approach broadly but as i also said at the beginning you know, as you recall i mean this is to be for you so if you find that that's what you really want then you should collectively say so and and let's uh, let's see how we can do it i'm indra sharma from sikshana foundation i am one of the founding trustees of uh, sikshana um in your connect i am this question is for cei Uh, in your connect how do you plan to 
make the donors connections work how do you you know network for us how do you select profiles and do you play a you know facilitator role uh, for uh, donors well thank you very much that's a I'm surprised that question took so long to come. Uh, um, uh, I, I, um, we, we have in mind uh, really two sort of approaches to this. One is that as to, uh, as I think Vijay mentioned, as Michelle also mentioned, that uh, among these various, f these forums that will emerge, one is already uh, just beginning of, of a funders, uh, funders platform, funders forum. But that's for the funders to discuss among themselves. But as a part of that, they, they will also uh, provide information about themselves and what they're interested in, in in a public way. So they'll have a, their own private discussion and they'll have their public way. Um, the second thing is um, that uh, you will be, you know, it, it will be perfectly possible for you, therefore, to look at uh, different funders to search. You know, I'm interested, whatever it is. I'm interested in a in a, in a funder that's that wants to support uh, early childhood in Maharashtra. I mean, you, you you know, in theory, you should be able to find that. Uh, again, you're not going to be able to find that today, frankly. But but over time, that sort of thing. But then you need to think about what your information you need to provide, and this is really important, I think. It is quite striking, and this is not a criticism, but it's a comment. It's quite striking that for, for all 136 profiles, some slightly less than half are actually reporting results. So, I mean, really reporting them. But if you want a funder to fund you, you're going to have to obviously start thinking about uh, how you would report results. And um, so that's one aspect. Uh, another aspect may be that um, uh, we are thinking about also some sort of uh, actual sort of fun matchmaking um, uh, feature service, uh, which might be charged for uh, charging the funders. I mean, um, but we have that's a, again. It's a bit like the question over there. Perhaps it's you know we can't do everything initially, but that's for sort of down down the road, but maybe not too far down the road, because there's clearly quite a lot of demand, demand for that. But again, I think you should, you, you know, you should also think about how, how this could be made useful to you beyond, beyond what I said. But those, that's some of the thinking we, we have. Good afternoon. My name is Nikhil. I'm from a group called Cloud Mentor. So just a question to, I think, everybody in a sense. Uh, so we're focusing a lot on rural education and sort of empowering the children who don't really have access to education, which is one side of the coin. Uh, what about the side of the coin that's focusing on urban education? Because I think, like Sir mentioned, the aspect of uh, the demographic dividend, uh, the fact that, you know, India 2020 is going to be, uh, you know, the average age of an Indian is going to be 25 years old. So what does CIE have in mind to bring the youth on board to, to consider education as a challenge? Because this is something that's not going to go away in a year or two years. So how do you get the youth on board to, to consider education as a challenge and to solve that problem? So I'm talking about, let's say, 11 standard students, 12 standard students, engineering uh, college students. So how do you uh, look at uh, improving the education space for the urban child as well? Because at the end of the day, they're also going to be sort of heading companies and uh, probably will have more power to sort of uh, do change in, let's say, 10 years down the line. We have, uh, you know, a team called Skill for Work and, uh, you know, we are not restricting it to any rural or anything. In fact, we welcome uh, both urban and rural. There is no restriction as such. So I think currently we have few themes, few institutions who are doing that work. So we welcome if you, there are more institutions. We will be definitely proactively working on that area to identify as many institutions as possible who are working on employability, you know, skill, de skill development and all that. We will definitely bring them into our fold. So we welcome you also to contribute to that. If you have any ideas, if you have any references, please do that. I would like to add uh, our efforts in Vidya Poshik. That is uh, because we are uh, attached to more with the youth in the higher education beyond 10th standard. So we made an effort to bring uh, the education institutions post 10th grade and as well as the industries 
it could be in arts or commerce or science or pure science or technology in various depending on the kind of services which the industries are likely to have so uh, at the end of some three years of effort so could make some managements of the education institutions ready to give a space it is happening in some engineering colleges but not in uh, uh, barring some premier colleges uh, but it has not happened so far as far as karnataka is concerned so at least uh, as of now some 20 managements so in a block area or in a district town who are ready to give a free space or an internet connection or a, uh, some minimum infrastructure that could be available and waiting for the industries then we started contacting a lot of industrialists maybe around uh, nearly 100 out of which uh, two have shown interest in the, so this is the effort of three years so in a, i want to sum up that so the solution for the youth of india account to me is to bring the industrialist maybe the there is a as ashok was saying from the demand side and the supply side here the supply side is ready on that in in uh, and there shouldn't be a challenge but from the demand side from the industry collaborating with uh, education institution is a very rare phenomena barring iits and i am some premier institutions and uh, we experimented having an mou with some industries uh, after taking some three years with uh, vice chancellors of all the universities government of karnataka and we did some big uh, mous with uh, uh, some mncs and national level corporates uh, but they are all very small experiments so the challenge is to make aware these people who are uh, supposed to be in international or national players or in finance etc industries bring them to the youth so that could be a, a change maker thank you what he said there is this national skill development council nsdc a lot of people have tied up with nsdc to offer uh, you know training programs we are one of the partners uh, that's not my area of work, so I'll not be able to answer all the possible questions on it, so don't ask me any further. Uh, but what we do through these centers is to offer, uh, uh, you know, short-term courses to help employability. Uh, that is one thing. The other area of work that we have is that the National Vocational NVQF Qualification Education Framework, that's, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, being piloted. One is in Haryana, and I think one is somewhere in West Bengal. So we're a part of that also. So what both these attempt to do is to take students who are studying in school and help them, you know, add those skills, as well as those who kind of miss the bus and, you know, are already out of school. Either they finish 10th or they finish graduation, but the kind of graduation he spoke about, two hours in class and four hours outside, uh, and therefore do not have that competency. Uh, to do those kind of programs. So there's a variety of programs being offered today, uh, both free and paid depending on, you know, the categories you come from. And uh, with, uh, uh, with this thing that uh, there has to be placement, a short placement, uh, which is a challenge for companies like ours, but uh, there are placement partner tie-ups and those things which are happening in the market today. So it's pretty encouraging from that sense, although the sheer numbers make it very mind-boggling as to how we're going to achieve those numbers. This uh, one point that I want everybody to consider is that uh, here I'm not talking about uh, divide between rural and urban India, but yes, uh, there is. I have started thinking that there is India and non-India. So even if in terms of skill development programs and education, you will see they are only for India. So we collectively, either through this forum, also needs to think about uh, innovating programs not only whatever is ex existing, but uh, you all were saying about developing papers and researches, but that should lead to some action because uh, if we want really India to be youth progressive nation, as we are saying it is, then it can't be through just India, which is in urban cities. It has to be through rural India as well because 80% of our population is there. So my request is that through this forum, we must think about this and how we can um, address this challenge. So actually there's something very interesting, you know, we've essentially all been talking about the fact that the growth of the non-state sector is a response to the quality issues in the government sector, at least where choice ex exists. 
But an, uh, another important point is that the average, and please, I'm not talking about, of course, anybody in this room, the, the average quality of the non-state education is not particularly high. It may be higher than the government, but it may not be high enough. So another thing for you to think about, I think, is how to actually improve within the non-state sector, raise the bar completely. And that's another reason for not just thinking about this as government versus uh, non-state, but how can you raise it you know, for everybody? Hello, I'm Mamta. I'm from Tech Mahindra Foundation. Uh, we partner with NGOs. Uh, our, our focus areas are education, vocational training, and disability. And we mainly focus on the urban poor. And um, one of the questions that Indra raised was how do you connect with the funders and uh, the, uh, the NGOs? That was one of my questions anyway, she has asked. Uh, what I would also like to ask is about the Education Innovator, Innovat Innovators Forum. Um, we, uh, we see a lot of innovators here, that is ILFS, Cloud Mentors, Agastya Foundation, Akshara Foundation. Um, and we are looking at a partnership uh, with the government system. This is the PPP model. And we, we also uh, seen that many of you have uh, said that you are uh, more into the PPP model. How do we bring all these brains together and how do we put it together to the government? And uh, uh, because we have been trying our bit and we have not been successful in doing that. Um, not, not been successful in the sense that we have not been able to get people on board together. We have, we have seen that some of the NGOs are pretty rigid. Uh, they do not want to um, partner with the government or uh, a lot of other kind of uh, uh, restrictions that we have come up with. How can say, uh, CEI be uh, helpful in this one? And... Um, Another question to Ashok, um, sorry, <laughs> um, uh, your, uh, um, your periodic reports that go to the, um, the, yeah, the corporators and MLAs and MPs, uh, do they respond back and how is it uploaded onto your website and how do we get to see that analysis? Is there any way or is it the people who actually report should go back and check and report it back? whether any action has been taken. And uh, because we do get a lot of um, uh, clients. Uh, we are an IT company and we have a lot of clients who come forward and ask us if they can work with government schools. And one of the things that they come up with, can we build toilets for them? Can we build a classroom? Can we do something else? But we know that there is funds for the government for all these things. How do we get these funds into the school? Um, and can we use this system to uh, develop the schools and, and use the money that the clients want to give us for something else, much more productive? Um, you know, um, uh, even Michelle was telling that the 136 profiles that are up in the website, in fact, half of them are working with the government. Even in India that we have profiled 30, half of them are working with the government. So although it is a non-state actor, but the non-state actors are working with the government system. So all of us have worked with the government system and continue to work. Uh, I don't know there is any one solution for it, but sometimes you get excellent officers who are interested in this. Maybe you have to wait for that right time. I've uh, one in Chennai, but not in Bangalore. <laughs> okay, you'll get it, don't worry. <laughs> so who want this PPP model, you know, who want NGOs and other institutions <coughs> to come and work with the system? There are some great officers. In fact, all of us have entered when there are such great officers, you know, and then maintain that relationship uh, with government. But as I also said, um, how to bring these best practices of PPP onto our website is also one of the theme areas that we are working on. You know, some state governments are very proactive, some state governments really want to work, some state governments don't want to work. But how to educate those people, you know, how to educate those governments which are not working or don't want to work? You know, by quoting them examples of other other governments. So we have we want to take up this task of uh, you know building a good a good climate for PPPs in education. So that will take time. But as I said, always keep your eyes and ears open about officers you know who are who welcome this. I think in Karnataka, our minister has said, new minister has said that I welcome you know a lot of private people coming and working with uh, this one. So that is a good sign. So that is what is my, I don't think there is any solution for that, but that is like any market people, you know, waiting for the right moment to sell their products, we should be looking for that. We have been working with NGOs, starting from literacy missions, you know, we have been working and people have been helping us. 
and whenever NGO came forward with an innovative plan, definitely we have supported them. For example, when I was director of primary education, Akshara Pondi came forward with the reading program, Odhivana. We supported it, we saw that it was successful in Bangalore, and we, we wanted to extend it to the entire state. So there were some other problems that we did not do it. But the cards have been printed and supplied to all schools in Karnataka. So that way, and we have an, <coughs> a Shoda Bopana, she joined director DSAT throughout her career, whether it was, was DEO or DDP, she was helping Akshara Foundation. And I think <laughs> we are there for any good work that helps our government school children. There is nothing that, uh, that stops us from working with you, or nothing should stop you all from working with us. Uh, I think uh, uh, wherever there is a need for an NGO to enter the field and help us in doing our work or we work together, uh, we welcome it. In fact, as I uh, said, uh, Akshara Foundation was the first uh, NGO, big NGO, so-called, you know, um, NGO to work with the government and uh, we tried improving reading skills in the primary school, uh, in the primary school children. And uh, we did a pilot project and I was in charge of it in my area. And uh, it worked out very well and we upscaled it. So it's not that we're not open to it. Um, one is the need and uh, one is, um, you know, the norms and other things come into the picture. And whenever an NGO enters our school to do some good work, we find that uh, teachers, you know, uh, somewhere along the line they feel that uh, uh, they are teaching hours are cut down and, you know, so many problems are there. It's not just that we don't welcome the NGO to do extra work in the school. Any work given by you all will have the right attitude and you all are more focused than our own uh, group of people because we have lots of things to look into but you are more focused your uh, um, aim is just that so the result also is just fantastic so I would, I would never come in the way of uh, working with any of you <laughs> and I would suggest uh, one uh, thing here that is um, maybe uh, donors and um, you know there are many new NGOs who want to get into the field and uh, maybe they can start with pilot projects and um, the main thing for them would be uh, to showcase some of the work of NGOs on this uh, profile uh, to show how they entered and how they negotiated with the government and how they got into doing that and um, you know what were the hurdles and uh, in what way they were you know fulfilled what they wanted to do it will be very educative to put such ngos success stories on this uh, site so that um, uh, you know um, to show it's a positive thing which is happening fleshed out on the site and also in in person so one of them would be um, you know, browsing the database, seeing examples of how successful PPPs have been established um, and, and are having impact. Another, I would say, would be using these forums. Those on the site are focused on non-state innovations. Um, more broadly, we hope to engage the public sector. We hope to engage funders. We hope to engage all different types of stakeholders in this conversation to figure out how these innovations can be implemented in the public sector, how they can be improved, and to figure out what works and how to, and how to scale that up. So the second one, right? Rain stopped play. Uh, uh, so uh, the question about elected, I hope I can cover all the things that you asked for. Uh, we put up uh, the reports both in English and in Canada on the site. So they are available for any one of us to look at it uh, just by going onto the site. Uh, there are also equivalent reports of just published government data that's done by India Governs Research Institute. They also dissect the data by constituency, but they just do it for MLAs at this point. And that's also available as a parallel thing. So both all these things are available on the Karnataka Learning Partnership site. We 
at this point, we tend to hand deliver hard copies because we don't know how frequently our elected reps actually get onto their, uh, you know, the net. And so we just want, you know, at least in the beginning year or two years, we will hand deliver and make sure they get it. And like I said, the response in Bangalore at the MLA level has been very good. I won't say the same thing about the MP level, but at the MLA level has been good. And I suspect uh, as we go down to the panchayat and the cor municipal corporators, it might be even better because, you know, whether you like it or not, they have to face uh, the electorate every once in a while, right? Uh, five years in the normal course of events, uh, probably shorter when they have all these fights going on. But they have to face the electorate, so they are more concerned about doing the right thing by the people, much as we like to malign them. I am not saying that they are angels, but I'm just saying, much as we like to align them, there is malign them. There is a lot of good there also. In terms of getting uh, donors linked, uh, what happens is when we put up the MP MLA reports out on the net, we get calls where MLAs are telling us, okay, I have so much left in my local area development fund. Where can I invest? Which is the Anganwadi you said is doesn't have a room or the floor is uh, not there or the roof has collapsed. And because we collect data on every center, we are able to respond to it quickly. I see no reason why we can't do that for your clients if they want to invest. I mean, we can turn quickly turn around, at least in the areas where we have collected data, easily tell you which school buildings need what, which schools need drinking water. So we can tell you specifically by school, uh, you don't even need to ask us, actually. You can just go to the site, uh, and if you are working in urban Bangalore, for example, you can select the school that you want, and you go in and see all the facilities available there. You can see this, and that's updated once a year at, you know, at this point. It's updated by us to some extent. It's also updated by DICE. So there are two data points all the time. And I think your donors uh, who want to add to... Uh, infrastructure can easily go in and make that happen. Don't see a problem with that. Uh, for those of you who are from out of state, all of our work is in open source. So if somebody is doing, uh, is willing to take the deep pain of collecting data from hundreds and thousands and millions of kids and anchoring it in your state, we are happy to give that KLP software away. You can call it whatever your state's name and LP after that. Uh, and like Vijay said, it's our dream really that we should be able to make this an India learning partnership over the next, whatever, five, ten years, maybe in my lifetime we'll be able to do it. So, so you said we are sending reports to the government officials, the MLAs, the, so those guys, right? So are we sharing those reports to the people, as in village people, uh, village panchayat, those guys? So basically we are reporting a problem. Um, the village people, are they aware of that problem? Okay, it's not about reporting problems. There are good things and there are bad things. Uh, you know, uh, in, in Bangalore, for example, most schools have good buildings. So there is no question about not reporting that. We want to report that. There are always good things and bad things. Currently, we are doing it for MPs and MLAs only. This, this academic year has just begun. We will bring it, uh, also share it at the cluster level, at the block level, and at the district level. So the same report. So because we have the data, we can dissect it on the basis of a cluster block, uh, you know, uh, district, or in the case of Anganwadi's as a circle project district. So we'll be doing that this year. And we are hoping, you know, I, I think Mrs. Bopana will uh, validate this, that a lot of time is spent by uh, cluster level and block level people in doing repetitive tasks that could have been simplified if we gave them this information, right? I mean, somebody at the top asks for how many schools don't have drinking water and people are scrambling to get that information. So if we can make that available, it solves, you know, it kill, uh, reduces the time constraint on a lot of people. So that's something that we are going to try this year. We are also going to expand the footprint to include two districts in North Karnataka this year. The complete districts of Koppal and Gadag we are going to do for all MLAs, MPs, BEOs, CRPs, DDPIs, everybody. 
and we'll see where it takes. I mean, you know, in three or four years, we should be covering the whole state to make it happen.